This preview video is an abridged sample version of guidelines to accurate electrocardiogram interpretation found in the course from EEE, Executive Electrocardiogram Education. This video outlines an approach to electrocardiogram interpretation. The full version contains far more details and more examples of electrocardiograms. In order to accurately interpret an electrocardiogram, you need not only to know the criteria for each condition, but you should also have a system to make sure your interpretation is complete. This section will go over the format that most cardiologists use intuitively to read electrocardiograms. If you follow the system and know the criteria, then you should be able to give accurate, reproducible interpretations easily. It is important to go through the whole system. Go in order and do not skip steps. This way you ensure that you do not miss anything. In the beginning, this process may seem laborious and take time. As you practice, though, it becomes easier and quicker. The idea is then to develop pattern recognition, which allows you to possibly interpret the electrocardiogram at a glance. Also remember that ultimately you want to use this information for a clinical diagnosis and to help you manage the patient. These are the following steps. Check the patient's name, gender, and age if available. Check the scale to see the sweep speed and the voltage calibration. Next, rate, rhythm, axis, PR interval, QRS interval, QT interval, P waves, Q waves, QRS complexes, ST segments, and T waves. Then you make your electrocardiographic interpretation and, if possible, a clinical diagnosis. During the full version, all of the details of these steps are reviewed. Now I will apply these steps to reading this electrocardiogram. The name, age, and gender are not available. The scale is indicated by these boxes on the left, reflect a normal scale of 25 mm per second and 10 mm per millivolt. Rate 300, 150, 175. The rate is between 75 and 100 beats per minute. We will say about 85 beats per minute. Rhythm There are regular P waves that are followed by QRS complexes. The P waves are upright in leads 1, 2, and AVF, and inverted in lead AVR, suggesting a sinus rhythm. Since the rate is between 60 and 100 beats per minute, then we can list normal sinus rhythm in the ECG diagnosis section. Axes. The P waves are isoelectric in lead AVL and are upright in lead 2. The P wave axis, therefore, is positive 60 degrees, which is normal. The QRS complexes are also isoelectric in lead AVL and upright in lead 2. The QRS axis, therefore, is positive 60 degrees, which is normal. The T waves are down going approximately 3 mm in lead 1 and upward approximately 7 mm in lead AVF, suggesting that the T wave axis is here around positive 120 degrees. This is somewhat opposite to the QRS axis and will be put into the Think About section. Intervals. The PR interval is approximately four small boxes wide, or 0.16 seconds. This is normal. The QRS interval appears about two and one half small boxes wide, or 0.10 seconds. This too is normal. The QT interval is 0.36 seconds long. The RR interval is 0.68 seconds. The square root of 0.68 is 0.82. Using Bayzet's formula, the corrected QT interval equals the measured QT interval, 0.36 seconds, divided by the square root of the RR interval, 0.82, which equals 0.44 seconds. This is a normal corrected QT interval for either gender. Now for the wave morphologies. P waves. P waves in lead V1 are about one small box deep and one small box wide, suggesting possible left atrial abnormality. Possible left atrial abnormality can now be put into the ECG diagnosis section. 
The P waves in lead 2 are not 2 and 1 half small boxes tall, 2 small boxes wide nor peaked. Therefore, right atrial abnormality is not present. Q waves. There are no significant Q waves seen. QRS complexes. Let's ask the six questions. Are they tall, suggesting left ventricular hypertrophy? No. Are they small, suggesting low voltage? No. Are they wide, suggesting a bundle branch block? No. Are the R waves in V3 less than 3 mm, suggesting poor R wave progression? Yes. This will be noted in the Think About section to determine the cause later. Are there tall R waves in lead V1? No. Is the transition point in lead V3 or V4? Yes. It is between V3 and V4, which is normal transition. ST segments. The ST segments are elevated in leads 2, 3, and AVF, suggesting acute inferior subepicardial injury. Since the inferior wall is involved, we should now look for posterior wall involvement, and in fact, there is significant ST segment depression in lead V2 and subtle ST segment changes in lead V1. This suggests acute posterior wall subepicardial injury. In addition, there is ST segment depression in leads 1 and AVL, consistent with high lateral reciprocal changes. The ST segments in the remaining leads are at baseline and normal. Acute inferior and posterior subepicardial injury with high lateral reciprocal changes is now put into the ECG diagnosis section. T waves. The abnormalities of the ST segments in the inferior, posterior, and high lateral leads also involve the T waves. No further comments need to be made about these. The T waves in leads V3, V4, V5, and V6 are all upright and normal. We now go back to the Think About column. In this case, the differences in the T wave axis and the QRS axis are due to the injury and reciprocal changes in the inferior, posterior, and high lateral leads. This is a primary event, not secondary, and is already accounted for. The poor R wave progression is likely a normal variant, as the R waves in lead 1 are greater than 5 mm tall. No further comment, therefore, needs to be made. Our final electrocardiogram diagnosis is normal sinus rhythm, possible left atrial abnormality, acute inferior and posterior subepicardial injury with reciprocal changes. The clinical diagnosis is an acute ST segment elevation myocardial infarction and likely coronary artery disease. This concludes this section on guidelines to accurate electrocardiogram interpretation. If you like this video and wish to see more details about a systematic approach to interpreting electrocardiograms, please click on our link or visit us at ecgedu.com to create an account and to view other sample videos. Thank you.